Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Hello, hello everybody, and welcome along to round one of the AOR Hype Energy Season 19 F2 League. My name is Jacob Hancocks, and alongside me in the commentary box for this season is Milky Cereal. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob, and I'm really excited for a brand new season of Apex Online Racing Tier 2 action. And there are some bigger names on the order, and it's going to be fascinating to see how these new drivers come into the league they want to they will be wanting to establish themselves right at the top of that pecking order from the get-go indeed they will so round one of this season will not be in melbourne it will of course as you can see on your screens be at the sakir international circuit here in bahrain the uh season is abridged there are only 10 rounds to this season and the races have been put into a different order from what we are used to so just mixing things up a bit here in AOR and uh, Sack here, what a place to start it. For my money, the best track in F1. I know that's a very controversial statement, but I think if you take Sack here and you take it out of Bahrain and you put it instead in the middle of Italy, it's everyone's favorite track. That's what I think at least. I, 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 I can sit on the controversial train of Bahrain being a, one of the favorite circuits on the calendar. Um, I, I personally like, you know, the fast flowing circuits of Spa, Britain that we'll be getting to later on in the season. But that being said, while here at Bahrain, you have a lot of overtaking points. You've got three DRS zones, you know, three big breaking opportunities to find a move it's also really really hard on tire wear and that's something that i feel can catch a lot of drivers out new patches came through a while back on f1 safety cars are very common we've got 18 drivers on the grid anything can happen as we are in qualifying absolutely as you mentioned we are in qualifying as we're just seeing the guys getting the cars ready i'll take us over to the actual qualifying session here just Getting into the game now, and here we are. It should be there as the game struggles for a moment. Apologies for that, but just give it a moment. There we go. Okay, so the sound should arrive soon. Not entirely sure what that. There it is. Okay, excellent news. So as you mentioned, 18 drivers on the grid here, and they are all uh, out of the pits apart from one. That is TNSA in the Mercedes, who is actually a reserve driver who is standing in for one of the Mercedes drivers today. In fact, he's standing in for Skali, a Hungarian driver who came first in F6 last season, but who isn't managing to be present today. Okay. And I want to get straight into things with our kind of predictions, as some of the drivers are starting their first lap. So this gives us a good chance to do this before we get an indication of everyone's kind of pace which is I want to give it three drivers that I think are going to do particularly well, three drivers to really watch out for. And I want you to do the same, Jacob, and we can have a little comparison and, you know, keep an eye on, you know, possibly some of these star drivers that could be big names in Tier 2. Okay, so uh, you wanted me to throw my names out there first then, is that? So should, should we do it three at a time or should we go like one, 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 one? Let's go one, 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 and I'll let you start because okay. I'm ever so generous. Uh yeah. Okay, so <laughs> my first one, th this is my big outside chance, is a paddle of Foots who has just gone at the top of the standings. Uh, I commentated on him back in Split 5, and I think he's a driver that we can definitely watch out for. Has a lot of pace. Yeah, indeed. Okay, yeah, Padlo Futa is definitely one of the drivers I would also be looking out for. However, I will go for someone else. I'll go for his compatriot, his fellow Hungarian, Bolash Kevin, 
who will be in as as I say that he oh, very conveniently go. <laughs> goes top. That's lovely, actually. I love that. Bolash Kevin yeah. is a driver I have some experience commentating on from F3 last season, and he really took it to Camille Common, who is a driver who has entered F1 this season. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Bolash Kevin right up the top there. Yeah, Bolash Kevin. The Hungarians, they're just so quick, you know. Boat on <laughs> Formula Daddy. They're all right up there. I don't know what it is. Maybe they have some you know, superhuman, super fast racing food that they all eat. Um, my th my second name is one that's not actually on the list right now. And uh, that was um, Ulas Ozil did in, I think. Um, he's not here for some reason yet, but um, he's a name that I feel that we should be watching out for over the course of the season. So I'm going to keep that name there anyway. Indeed, yeah, no, I think that's a, a fair shout. Another person who I have had the pleasure of commentating on not very often, but occasionally, is Yeltek, and I believe that he is one of the fastest drivers in this field, currently on his outlap at the moment, so he's not going to be able to very conveniently go to the top of the standings just as we start talking about him. But in the Williams today, and currently at the very bottom of the standings, but of course, that will all change once he sets a lap time. Yeah. Now, for my final one, I was considering saying Hittinen, but I'm going to go with a really outside chance, um, Michael Tunitza. I have no idea who he is. <laughs> I don't know if he is related to David Tunitza, but hey, it's worth a shot. Yeah, I mean, that is, it's worth a shot. If name alone, maybe Mick Schumacher is going to be world champion in 2021, who knows? But uh, yeah, Michael Tunitza, he, I, what I can tell you about him is that he is currently sitting 85th in the world on the time trial standings for Bahrain. So he has some pedigree at this circuit at least and some raw pace to speak of and he's currently sitting up in fourth. Of course these guys are all setting lap times on the hard tires, worth mentioning that just real quickly. So these, ti these lap times aren't particularly representative of what we're going to be seeing towards the end of the session when they start to get on what I imagine most of them will be running on medium tires rather than soft tires because those soft tires degrade so quickly once you get into the race. As for my third pick, and this is going to look like I'm just picking the guy at the top of the standings, but Tom97 uh, was a driver who was in F2 two seasons ago, and he sat out last season. We haven't really seen him on F1 2019, certainly not an Apex Online racing competition at least. It'll be interesting to see how he does, but he was a strong driver, and he did win the very first race of the season two seasons ago uh, in Australia. So I'd like to see him do well, and I think he definitely has it in him as long as he keeps up the sort of level of performance from that he had on the F1 2018 game onto the F1 2019 game. Yeah, interested to see how that transition will come through. I haven't seen the name before, so interested to see how he can do. But 11 minutes left in qualifying, we're seeing a couple of drivers looking towards those soft tyres, and... You know, we talked about the hards and the mediums. We have to remember those safety cars. We may be seeing a couple of drivers go for the Ooh, mediums. Ooh, well, hold on, Tom. Sorry to cut you off there. Tom's just gone flying into the wall. As I was on board with him there, he's lost some of his front wing. He hasn't actually lost any of his wheels somehow. He hit the wall really hard there. on the, Just lost it on the entry to turn eight and went spearing off to the left-hand side. I'm really surprised that he's not retiring from the session with that one. That was a hefty hit. And as you say that, Kisiliak um, goes fastest with a 28-1. And just kudos to all the drivers because it is incredibly close. Barely a second separating the top of 14. Um, and let's see if um, it can stay that way through the remainder of the qualifying session. And what we do see a lot of these drivers liking to do is going out, setting a lap on the hard tyres. Then they come in and then they go for a couple of runs on the medium tyres. So if those medium laps don't work out, you know, they still have got their bank laps on those hard tyres available for them. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also just a little bit of a practice session for the drivers as well, getting their eye in. They'll have all been practicing right up until the event itself, of course, but it never hurts to just keep your hands warm, keep yourself in the zone, know exactly where the braking zones are. It's just always good to get that little bit of dress rehearsal in before you start to set those ultra fast lap times and speaking of those lap times uh the pole position for f2 this time last season in bahrain was thm 786 who managed a 127.230 on the medium tires so that's currently nine tenths faster than what kisliak has managed on the hard tires and with the step change between the hard tires and the medium tires i wouldn't be surprised to see some of our drivers getting pretty close to that if not surpassing it 
Yeah, and for sure, going from hard to mediums can probably at least give you about half a second. So it's kind of right on the cusp of beating that time from last season, back from season 18. And we'll have to see now, we're getting quite a few drivers coming into the pits to, to put on a new set of tyres for a second run. And I want to see if anyone's actually going to put on a set of medium tyres or whether they're going to stick to their guns and go for another set of hards. Yeah, interestingly, Dave Gaming in the Renault has come out on the soft tyres. Uh, he is currently on an outlap on those tyres as well, so he's not just sitting in the pits. He has elected to yep. go with those tyres. It'd be interesting to see whether he commits to setting a lap time on those tyres or not, but of course if he does, he'll really be in with a shout for pole because I don't see anyone else really deciding to go onto those soft tyres as of yet. I actually think this is a good choice from Dave Gaming because I think he's going to be one of the drivers in the league towards the bottom end. I don't actually think he's going to make it into the top 10 or he's going to be very close on that top 10 mark. So I think he's going to be able to get fairly high up and have that fresh um, choice of tyres for the race. So. Let's keep an eye out on him and what lap time he can pull off on his first lap as um, actually Corsac and Boomsong go uh, fastest and second fastest on those hards, 27.8 and 28.0 respectively. Yeah, they're already getting surprisingly close to that pole position of last season I was mentioning earlier. That 127.2, only about six and a half tenths faster than what Corsac has managed on the hard tyres, so that's seriously impressive from him. Dave Gaming's having a pretty tough lap, though, this time around. He's been all over the track in certain parts, and now with the traffic of Corsac up ahead, currently sitting at the top of the standings, Dave's really not having a clean lap of it at all in the Renault, and I think he'll probably have to consider backing out of this lap. As you see, Corsac just not getting out of the way at all. Uh, might be a little bit of decent going on between these guys, not entirely sure about that, but Dave Gaming does end up driving on pass, but this is not going to be a fast lap time from the Renault. No, it most certainly is not going to be, and most of these drivers would have opted to go, you know, when you select the tyre compounds at the start, they probably would have selected the harder of the options, so you get two hards, two mediums, and two softs. And if Dave Gaming has gone for this, he's only going to have one set of soft tyres remaining, and that means that if we do get a late safety car in the race, he's going to have no softs available for a last late ditch effort. Dave Gaming, though, he's going to stay out for one more lap. Um, as he has a bit Ooh. of a weird lift. Um, that was rather strange. Yeah, I think that, because that lap time still was only nine tenths of a second away from Corsac's current provisional pole time, despite that huge lift and despite the fact that he was yeah. all over the circuit in several parts of the track. So I can only assume that Dave overestimated the lap time he was on and thought by lifting off, he'd be likely to get in around that 11th place mark. And perhaps that's what he's aiming for, being realistic about his own chances and aiming to get into uh, 11th, 12th, 13th place, somewhere at the upper, in the lower teens, I should say, to be one of the top running guys uh, who gets to choose their set of tyres going into the race. But if that was what he was doing, he's completely overcompensated for it and finds himself down in 16th position. And with the field as tight as this, that's a very dangerous game to play indeed. Yeah, and I feel if Dave Gaming wanted to do that, which I do agree with you, I think that is his plan. Why not go on hard tyres, do a bank lap, or go on medium tyres, do a bank lap, and then go out on your soft tyres? And Because then you've got an indication, okay, I need to improve by, you know, four tenths, my delta's three tenths, right, I'd need to push by X, Y, Z amount. So, um, interesting from Dave Gaming, but let's see what he does, because I'm expecting him to come in the pits at the end of this lap, and shove on a new set of boots onto that car. Indeed, uh, that is what I expect him to do as well. I think that he will uh, definitely be trying to set a faster lap time than that, even if he does go onto the medium tyres. Just going to stick on board with Michael Tanitsa, who is halfway around his first flying lap on those medium tyres. His teammate, Zen Ame, has managed to go four and a half tenths off of the pace on his first medium lap run. So that's a slightly disappointing lap time from the sister Ferrari. We'll see whether Michael Tanitz is able to go any better as his teammate gets dutifully out of the way there in turn 11. Dax causing a bit more of a problem up ahead for Michael Tanitz potentially, but no, he gets out of the way as well through turn 13. They go and Michael gets it turned in pretty nicely. This has all looked very neat and tidy so far considering the traffic. It hasn't really thrown him off as he heads now down towards the second to last straight of the lap breaking just after the 100 meter board for the final corner. Very smooth on the exit. The rear not kicking out at all. And up to the line, where will this put him? It puts Keep him on. first. And uh, what were you saying? 27-2 was the record last time round. Well, um, how, 
what was the exact time? Because it's very close, I'm assuming. It was a 127.230, so there are six Ooh. and uh, 68 thousandths of a second left to go for these drivers if they want to topple that time. But having seen that, I have no doubt that they will. Yeah, um, considering that Michael Tanitza was not one of the quickest guys on those hard uh, compound of tyres, you'd expect, you know, at least another tenth to be coming uh, through, which would kind of show the improvement of uh, these effort or these tier two drivers from season 18 to season 19, you know, just getting more used to the game, improving as the season goes on. Indeed. So let's take a look. Who is currently getting towards the end of Yeltek. their flying lap? Yeltek. Yeah, let's take a look at him. He was one of my picks earlier today, so I'm going to be hoping that he does well as he heads into sector three of the lap now. We can compare this very directly to what we saw out of Michael Tanitza. Of course, this corner flat out. As long as you don't hook it up on the right-hand side, you'll be fine. Yeah. Cuts a lot more of turn 14 there, uh, actually. Just to cut you off there, Jacob, um, he's one and a half seconds down already. He's not oh. using any ERS, so... He's bailed out of this mm -hmm. lap and he wants to go for a new one. I think, I think VSR JW, he's on a lap. He's two tenths up to sector one as he makes his way through turn at 12. Four tenths up through sector two as Ease is on the power. Actually, he's not easing at all. That back end stepping out all over the place, but you do have to risk it for the biscuit, as they say, as he makes his way down now into turn 14. Nice and late on the brakes. Stays away from the curb on the apex and now back on the power. The rear end nice and stable on the exit. The RS open. What's it going to be? It will be fast. 27.7. Not quite enough to take a pole. And he's actually four tenths off. So he'll have enough time maybe to do another lap. But not the best. Yeah, that's certainly not ideal for the lead Toro Rosso at the moment as Corsac displaces and moves himself up into second position somehow, despite the fact he hasn't come across the line. There we go. No, I think I might be slightly desynchronized from Corsac myself, so I might be seeing some odd readings from him throughout the race, so apologies yes. to everyone for that one. Pablo Futej has managed to put himself up into third position. One of your picks in the Alfa Romeo, a solid lap time from him, a 127.5. And TNC, the stand-in in the Mercedes, putting himself up into fourth position as well. Boom Sun up into fifth, and this is all knocking down Dax, who managed to put himself up into second for a little while there. Left the session after that, though, so he's having some connection issues. Hopefully, he can get those sort it out. Let's see what Bolash Kevin is doing in the Red Bull. Getting into the hardest part of the circuit. Turn 10. Ever so difficult, but he gets it turned in nicely. No lockups and very, very smooth onto the power down towards turn 11 on the second DRS straight here. Taking all of the curb on the outside on the way in. And just running a tiny bit wide through there, though. That will actually unsettle the car significantly if you try and plant the throttle. So that's going to have cost him a little bit of time, I would seven say. Seven tenths up. He's seven tenths up through sector two. This is very quick from Balash Kevin. And he might be able to take away that P1 spot from Michael Tanitza as we make our way into the final corner. Using up all of the track. Just kisses the apex through 14. Onto the power. Now it's the easy part. Open up the DRS as soon as he can. 27.18, that's Balash Kevin on provisional pole. There we go, there's my boy Balash Kevin up into pole position at the moment in the Red Bull. Who is there out there to challenge him? Tom97 is yet to set a lap time on his medium tyres. So we'll see what he's able to do in the Mercedes as he's heading down towards the final corner now. We won't have long to wait before finding out just how quick this lap has been. Fuel light blinking, showing that he's running on fumes at this point, going about as fast as he could possibly be going. And up to the line he comes. Where will this put him? And it's only good enough for 11th. That's disappointing for the Mercedes driver. Yeah, Yaltek is on his lap. He's five tenths up on his provisional best. So he's looking at around that mid-27 mark. So around the fourth, fifth, near Tinte and Padlo Futez. As that's there, Kish Kishilak. Going P4 with a 27.5 as Yeltek makes his way through the final corner. Indeed, yeah, and the time has elapsed, so everyone will just be able to finish the lap times they're currently on, and Yeltek does so and moves himself up into fourth, displacing Kislyak down to fifth. Bit of a fan favorite, Kislyak, so I apologize to the guys who have come to watch him. He's moved down to fifth at the moment, though that's still a very respectable lap time indeed. Corsac NS in the racing point. What's he able to do? A lot of movement going down, lower down the order. Dave Gaming hasn't managed to get any better than 14th. He went out for another set of soft tires and couldn't get any faster than a 27.9. Looks like JW's up into sixth position, moving himself ahead of Pablo Futej for the time being. But here comes Corsac, 
up towards the final corner. In fact, I think Pablo Futej is up ahead of him, so we'll jump on board with the Alfa Romeo as he heads up towards the line. One of many Hungarian drivers in the field. Can he make it an all-Hungarian front row? No, he can't. Just behind Michael Tanita, but there's Corsak, who I was on board with for so long I cut away from him, but up into pole position he goes now. Will Bolash Kevin be able to respond? No, he will not. He's coasting into the pits, and that might be all she wrote for the qualifying session. Waza coming up to the line now in the McLaren, and he's not going to go any faster down in 10th position for him and on four lap old medium tires as well. That's got to feel pretty bad. Yeah, and FX Rupert is your final man. 28-0 for Mr. Rupert on those soft tires. He lifted across the line as well. So I think he could have been a fair bit high up, but didn't want to risk coming into that top 10 and just ended up compromising himself a little bit too much there. Yeah, indeed, that does seem to have been the case. And all the rest of the drivers out there at the moment, it's only Kislyak remaining on track now and he is not on a fast lap so this will be your grid order for the AOR Hype Energy Season 19 F2 League opener here at the Sakir International Circuit in Bahrain and it is topped and tailed by the racing points Corsak in first and Robert 17 BVB with a disappointing performance only a 128.7 he's well off the pace down there down in 80. Yeah, indeed, and uh, Balash, Kevin, and uh, Padlo Futis, those two Hungarians that almost completed the front row of the grid. They're separated by Michael Tonitza in the Ferrari. Whether he has any re um, relation to David Tonitza awaits to be seen. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping there is a relation there, because that would be a lovely little storyline, yeah. but... Uh, so, three of the drivers we mentioned, in fact, four of the drivers we mentioned are in the top five. However, the top one is not one of the ones we called out for the guys to look towards. Corsac NS with a very good lap time to put himself four hundredths of a second faster than Bolash Kevin. It was so close up at the top. And now as the qualifying session finally comes to a formal close, we'll be able to see the results screen. Here they are. so close across the field and that's just a massive compliment to everyone taking part how close it is eight tenths separating the top 13 and all of them on those medium tires indeed yeah dave the only guy to set a lap time set his fastest lap time on anything other than the medium tires actually no that's not the truth fx ruppert down there in 16th also went for a soft tire lap so that's got to be worrying for him to be down there in 16th despite that fact and robert 17 bvb couldn't go any faster on any of his other tyres than he managed on the hard tyres. So that explains why he's so far off the pace. I suspect he probably invalidated a few laps throughout the session. But this is looking to be one very spicy race indeed. With the top two separated by less than half a tenth of a second. Okay, Jacob. I have confirmation from David Tanitza himself who is in the chat. That is his brother. Michael Tanitza is his brother. So... There we go. And he's pro he's probably got his brother as a race engineer for him as well. So um, <laughs> we might be seeing some eSport level strategies coming out here for Michael Tunitza. Yeah, no, it's certainly going to help to have uh, David Tunitza behind you or being able to, you know, give you a little bit of advice here and there. That's definitely going to be beneficial for Michael's chances. So we'll see what he's able to do with the support of the Ferrari and the support of his brother behind him as well out-qualified his teammates and he's right up there at the top as we just see the drivers sorting out the final little fine-tuning parts of their setups here just some little tweaks as there's two seconds remaining before they get dumped onto the grid and we go on to our formation lap yeah just making sure that they have the right fuel loads of course um we do have park firming conditions so you can only really change that front wing and the brake bias settings on your car so it's all about getting, making sure that you've got your tire strategy, uh, your tire strategies optimized, and you have the right amount of fuel here at Bahrain. A lot of straights for you to go into mode three, so you can generally take about three and a half to four laps of extra fuel. But safety cars can come into play, and you know you can risk it that little bit more with a little bit less fuel on board. Just looking down towards the guys who were able to choose which tyres they wanted to run on. Interestingly enough, JSR, sitting in 11th position, didn't opt to run the Contra strategy. He's going to be starting on the medium tyres, just like the top 10. Then behind him, Dax and Hittinen both did go for those hard tyres. 
Dave Gaming and FX Rupert, who both uh, both the Renault boys went, of course, for soft tyre laps in qualifying, have elected nonetheless to start on the medium tyres, despite the fact they avoided them entirely in qualifying, so I'm not entirely sure what their plan was there, but down in 14th and 16th, it's not looking all that good for them. The rest of the guys outside of the top 10, Tom97, Zename, and Robert, will all be starting on those hard tyres, as you might expect. Yeah, and Tom97, as you mentioned, one of the guys to watch out for. I'm interested to see what he can do from down the order. He's on those hard, so theoretically he has that better strategy, the alternate strategy and fresh tyres as well. So if he can stay out of trouble, you never know. He might have an outside chance of picking up some big points, maybe a top five, maybe even go for the podium, depending on what his race pace is are looking like. But up at the front, Corsak and Balash Kevin on the front row. Michael Tenitsa and Padlo Futes. I'm very interested to see how these guys do off the start, hoping for no drama on that turn one or heading into turn four on the opening lap. Interesting to note, it seems like Corsac has spun or had some sort of incident somewhere on the outlap there as he's actually running in about, uh, where is he, about seventh or eighth position. Uh, I think you're desynced with him because for me oh, he's no, just lined course. up on the start. Yeah, okay, um, so yeah, I have been desynced with him and that's really bad news actually because that means we're not going to be able to see his true location on the stream so i can only apologize for that that's really really unfortunate uh how about i'll, I'll let you take it away with the the uh commentary the for the start of the race just because you are able to see the race leader and i'm not all right then well it's time to get underway for the apex online racing hype energy season 19 tier 2 five red lights and it's lights out and away we go. It's a really good start from Padlo Futes as we make our way down the straight into turn one. Balash Kevin tries to defend from Michael Tinitza who goes down the inside. It's going to be Corsak who leads Michael Tinitza around the outside up into P2. It's a great start from Yeltek who's now on the back of Balash Kevin as we make our way down the straight into uh, turn uh, three. As we, uh, I ride on board with Yeltek very close to Balash Kevin as it's Corsak who leads from Tinitza from Balash Kevin and Yeltek in P4. Yeah, and Waza down in P5. He's up several places from where he started. Both of the McLaren boys up. One up five positions and one up four positions from where they started. Both rocket ships off of the line there. And that's especially good news for Dax, who started on those hard tyres. Though he is losing a place at the moment down to Boomsun. He's losing out on what must be eighth and ninth position. I'm going to have to keep factoring in the fact oh, that... Oh, uh, contact. Contact down towards the back there as Dax has been rear-ended a little bit by Tianse. Oh, I didn't realize Tianzi had gone into the back of him. I thought Dax had just outbraked himself slightly into a turn 10. But thankfully, no bigger dramas. Everyone still seems to have their front wing intact. No one miles off the whole uh, pack. But it is Corsak who uh, leads from Michael to Nitsa. And uh, let's see if Boomsong can make his way up the field. Waz has done a good job. As you mentioned, he's gained uh, five uh, places. And now uh, he can begin the hunt down onto Yelta. Indeed, Robert also with a good start in the second of the two racing points. He's up four positions from where he started. Looks like FX Rupert and Zen Ali are battling down there towards the bottom as Corsac makes his way back up to the top of the standings for me. That's going to be a pain to deal with throughout the whole race. I can only apologize to everyone watching. Nothing we could do about it. We just have to take my word for it. It looks like Michael Tanitza is leading the way at the moment with Bolash Kevin in second. But in actual fact, they are currently second oh, he and third. gets a good run out of turn one and two. He's now all side by side with JSR as we make our way down into a turn of four. Hitton was ahead beforehand and now side by side into the hairpin. JSR is going to try to hold it around the outside, but I think Hitton might be able to make this work. They're still side by side as they make their way into a five and a six. And it's going to be Hittinen who takes the position down into turn eight. As up ahead, JW getting pretty close to Tinse. Yeah, Tinse already been involved with a little bit. As Dax goes flying off the road all on his own that time. So maybe he wasn't rear-ended the first time after all. Tinse, very opportunistic, diving up the inside of the McLaren driver. Will Dax be able to fight it back? Heading down towards turn 11. Currently on the harder tyres and that will not benefit him here. But he does have the inside line. Bit of contact once again between the two drivers. And it's Tianse who makes it out on top. And now JW comes flying through. Barging his way past oh, Dax in the back. McLaren. And no! Dax gone round and into the wall. He loses several elements of his front wing. But all Wheels remaining on his wagon and he's going to be able to still continue in this race, albeit way off the back of the field. That was always going to end in disaster, side by side through turn 12, almost touching that auto spin curb. That was risky from Dax and one mistake just becomes another huge mistake 
and that's a Dax's shot for a top third out of the window unless we do potentially get a safety car. However, up at the front, DRS is enabled this lap and it is Corsac who leads for Michael Tinitza ahead of Balash Kevin and neither of them have broken out of that one second DRS zone yet. Yeah, what is the gap currently between Tunitsa and Corsac? It's still half a second. Half a second. Okay, so a real train of guys up at the front with Yeltek just clinging onto their coattails, falling away a little bit. Waza and Pablo Futej were actually a bit side by side into the first corner there, and that explains why the McLaren driver has fallen away a little bit as it looks like there's a move there. Boomson up the inside of Kisliak, barges away through and up into seventh position ahead of the Haas there. And now Pablo oh, Fute is trying to take advantage as well. He can't quite make it up the inside of turn 10. That would have been very yes, opportunistic. DRS. Yes, DRS and Waza does not as we make our way down towards a turn 11. Is he close? enough no he's just a little bit further back and he's just gonna have to bide his time for that little bit longer was uh, dropping off of this four-way battle for the lead and he's starting to hold up paddle Futes and a boom song absolutely yes and uh, they are all falling away a little bit from Yeltek currently sitting in fourth position it says third on your screens he is in fact in fourth because Corsac is leading the way I'm gonna have to keep reminding everyone of that one I think but uh, Corsak leading the way from Tony to Bolash Kevin in third, Yeltek in fourth. There you go, and there you see the true order there as Yeltek setting the fastest lap of the race so far, a 131.0, showing a bit of intent there down in fourth position at the moment. None of the top guys going to be battling into the first corner. Boomson so close behind Pablo Fute. Tinse around the outside of JW. There's contact between the two of them. Tinse goes a little bit sideways, but he has the inside four too. Uh, JW holds it around the outside and will hold on to ninth place for now. Yeah, and meanwhile, behind them, there was another battle going on between the other Mercedes and the other Toro Rosso. It was Tom97 and JSR were battling. It's the Mercedes that came out on top in that one, though, whereas it was the Toro Rosso that won the battle between JW and Tinse. Tinse was very, very cautious in turn two there. Didn't want any more contact than he's had already in this race, and good on him for that. But JW was able to just move it around the outside, as you mentioned, as a result of that. Dax way down at the back, of course having already come into the pits after his incident. But other than that, really close running throughout the field. Look at Padla Futes. He's looking for the inside down into turn 11. Side by side, there's contact between the two of them. But that's Waza who's going to be forced out wide. Boomsong did have a look at Padla Futes earlier in the lap, but he lost out from it. And now Padla Futes is up into fifth place and he has a clear air as well. And he can try to bridge that three and a half second gap to Yeldek. But Boomsong will be having a look at Waza surely into turn one. Yeah, he thought about it into the final corner as well there. And Waza actually runs a little bit wide. Didn't quite meet the apex of the final corner. That could compromise him down towards turn one. Of course, he will have the DRS and the slipstream available to him just as much as Boomsong has on him behind. But here it is, the Red Bull, who's closer to the McLaren than they are to the Alfa Romeo. But Pablo Futej goes defensive anyway. It's three wide here, but it's Boomsong taking the position away from Waza. Couldn't challenge Pablo Futej in the end, who remains in fifth position for the time being. And Boomsong's going to have a look now down into turn four. He's got the inside down behind. We can see, I think that's Waza trying to defend from Kishilak, who's on the outside. Sorry, that's Waza. He keeps the position for seventh, but it's Boomsong side by side. This is risky through six and seven as we make our way down into turn eight. Palafute is around the outside, but is he going to be able to have the traction? This still side by side. Boom, uh, Boomsong on the outside will be able to pick up the position, and Palafute is is going to have to settle for sixth place for now. That is absolutely stunning racing between Pablo Futej and Boomsong there. That was incredible. So much respect shown going side by side all the way through the S section. That's almost impossible, and yet they managed it with nary a touch between them. Great stuff from them, and Boomsong was the victor at the end of it, but great driving from the pair of them. Waza looking to get involved as well, as he's currently really close behind Pablo Futej. This is where all the battling is going on in the field at the moment, but this will mean they are wearing out their tyres at a rate of knots compared to the rest of the guys behind and the guys in front as well, particularly the front runners have not been battling. And you can see that in the fact that there's a five second gap already opening up between Boomson and Yeltek, the two Dutchmen in fourth and fifth positions. And I feel that's the most important point. Boomsong, sure, he overtook Padla Futes, but he lost one and a half seconds in the process. 
Was it worth it to go for the move there with Padla Fute? Mm. He outbreaks himself into the back of Boom Song. There was talk about an Alpha Romeo outbreaking themselves, so we've had it. Waza picks up the position. There's surely damage to the Alpha Romeo. And now Waza can look down the inside into turn four. Boom Song has the outside. Will he be able to hold it? No, he has a bit of a four wheel drift. And he's uh, down to sixth place. Padla Fute has no one to blame except for himself there. And he's all the way back down in seventh now. Yeah, and just after, the lap after I was complimenting him, as they went side by side again to cut myself off here, it's Wazza and Boomson battling constantly. Boomson's tyres are soon going to be absolutely nothing left. He's just battling non-stop since the very start of the race and actually makes a little bit of contact with the rear end of the McLaren there through turn 10. And now Padlo Futo is looking to take advantage, but he's just going to fall in line for the time being. The DRS not strong enough on the straight, and he might go into the back of Boomson again. Not quite, but twice in one lap would have really been pushed it for Battle of Footage there. Yeah, and that would have really been setting the rage in for Boom Song. And you can sense the part of, um, part of me, you can sense Boom Song sweating as that little white arrow becomes uh, bigger and bigger and redder and redder. And he'd be like, please, no, not again. But Boom Song, he's on the back of Waza. We know he has the pace as well. He should be able to do it this time around. He's right on the back and he will have DRS. Indeed he will. Looks like Bolash Kevin's actually really close behind Michael Tanisa. Just going to cut to them briefly. Nothing doing in that battle though. So where will Boomson be? He's up the inside already. Before they even get to the braking zone, he's past the McLaren driver. Oh, and he will be able to defend the position. Padlo Fute trying to go up the inside. There was a bit of ghosting going on there. But that would have been yet more contact if that didn't happen. Padlo Fute wasn't able to make the move and stays in seventh for the time being. Waza having to defend with his life. Robert picking up what I think is the first three second time penalty of the race though. Don't yep. quote me on that. Waza getting it nice through, through turn four there and it doesn't look like we're going to see people going side by side into the S's for the third lap in a row. Also your pick uh, Jacob uh, Tom he's just found a move past Tinse who is one of the medium tire runners Tom on those hard tires he's now right on the back of this train that goes all the way up to fifth place so Tom right now he's in the best position of all of these guys to take a top five finish. Absolutely, yeah, and it was for a while. It was uh, Dax who was running the highest of the hard tire runners, but of course we saw him spearing off into the wall, so he lost all of that advantage when he had to come into the pits, and now Tom is flying the flag for the Contra Strategists, and just a few laps ago, it feels like, I was talking about him battling for 11th or 12th position with JSR. All of a sudden, he's back behind JSR's teammate and already ahead of Tianse, his own teammate. So great few laps for Tom here as he's really making progress through the field, showing that the hard tires are really starting to come alive and the medium tires are really starting to struggle. Meanwhile, up at the front, Corsac just weaving on the straight, trying to break that slip tree. Michael Tanitza looking closer than ever before. But he's just still going to have to settle for second place. Maybe into turn four, he could have a little bit of a look. As Tinsay is the first of our drivers to make a pit stop. Yeah, first of the regular strategies to make a pit stop. That oh, is, of course, true, FX, yeah. Rupert and Dax have both come into the pits. Rupert started the race on those soft tyres. Oh, no, he started on the medium tyres. He had to come into the pit, so he must have picked up damage somewhere around the track. Didn't catch that, but the race goes from bad to worse for him. The runner boys really not having a good time. But Tiense will come out down in 16th position in the Mercedes. We'll see whether he's able to fight back up towards the points positions. He was at the very bottom end of the points before he came into the pits. And Boomsong, after all of that fighting, he doesn't really seem to have the pace to really pull away from Waza here. He's seven tenths up, but I don't think it's enough. And Tommy's right on the back of this battle, and Tom's just happy to step back here and just wait for all of these guys, their medium tires, uh, to die. Yeah, and you can see that Tom's really not engaging with the sort of mindset that the rest of these guys are. You saw all of them weaving on the straight, trying to desperately hold on to that little bit of slipstream. Tom, let them do that. Let them do that. I'm just going to come up behind them with my harder tires, and their tires are going to be falling off the cliff, and I'm just going to be able to breeze straight past them. That's what he's thinking in the Mercedes at the moment. Of course, it'd be even better for him if they all headed into the pits on this lap, as uh, Tianse did on the previous lap. Some of them will start head in heading into the pits sooner rather than later. Will any of them do it on this lap? It doesn't look like it, so no luck there for Tom. Boom Song, he's now eight seconds behind Yeltek, who is falling back from this three-way battle at the front. So Yeltek in a bit of a no man's land right now, as this battle for fifth place just remains. Tom will just be saving fuel, saving ERS, so that when he does make the pit stop for all the medium tires, or in fact, when these uh, drivers in front make their pit stops, he can just really, really try to push. 
back up at the front. They're all still so close to each other. It's telling me that Michael Tanitsa is five tenths of a second behind Corsak at the moment. That sounds about right. Similar gap from Tonitsa to Bolash Kevin behind as well. As you mentioned, Yeltek starting to fall away a little bit. He was able to keep the pace with the big boys for quite a long time in the opening few laps of this race, but now in the Williams, starting to struggle just a little bit, and Boomson's actually closing in on him ever so slightly compared to last lap. Yeah, Boomson is making some uh, slow inroads, but I'm expecting around that lap 13 mark, lap 12, 13, we're going to be seeing our first pit stops for those hard tyres. Team say pitting very early, and I have a feeling that he might be going on to some softs for the last four or five uh, laps. But up at the front, Balash Kevin, so close to Tanitza, but he's just not going to be able to find anything because Tanitza has DRS himself, although Tanitza a little bit sideways on the exit of a turn of 14 and 15. And maybe that could give Balash Kevin a chance, but once again, Kevin just too far back. He shows his nose into turn one, though. You can see a little bit of impatience there from the Hungarian driver, just trying to do something, maybe scare oh, Michael Tanitza off the moment. road. Corsak's gone sideways. Michael Tanitza's right on the tail as we make our way down into turn four. Continue because I'm not able to see it. Who's in the, who's in the lead? Tunitsa goes for the inside, but it's Korsak who's going to try to hold it around the outside. And now Balash Kevin looking to join in the fun. But Korsak will be able to hold on to P1 ahead of Michael Tunitsa as we make our way down the makeshift chicane and into uh, turn eight. Korsak holds on to the lead for now. Yeah, from our battling upper midfielders, Wazza and JW have both come into the pits. Just want to take this opportunity to mention as I see a Oh, few... look at Zen! Then he went for the inside onto JSR into the chicane and he's just ended up pretty much into the wall. Spun it, spins the car around, he's on the hard tires, they're going to be completely shot. And uh, he does have his front wing intact which is a, a positive for him at least. Yeah and while it's going really well for one of the Ferraris, the other Italian in the other Ferrari not having such a good time of it down in 12th uh, position, 13th position I should say. At the moment Kislyak's left the session. That's not good news for the Russian fan favourite here. He's going to have to get back into the session as quick as he possibly can because his AI car is going to be falling backwards at a rate of knots. That's great news for Tom however who will be able to drive clean through the Haas and up into 7th position goes the Mercedes. Uh, and looks Korsak like and in the pits. Corsak and Tunitsa both into the pits. So just going to quickly remind everyone watching that I am desynchronized from Corsak and you are seeing my perspective. So Corsak is actually de facto leading this race, but you cannot see it on the screen. So everything that Milky Serial says is correct about whether Corsak is in first or not. So just try and bear that in mind as we go through the race. I know it's difficult. This is a really awkward situation. But hopefully it's not uh, causing too much of an issue for your guys' enjoyment as everyone pretty much heads into the pits. A few guys left out there on the medium tyres. Dave Gaming, Kislyak's AI car and Bolash Kevin, interesting enough, staying out on the medium tyres. Everyone else has headed into the pits. But crucially, your effective top two, they are out in the clear air. Dave Gaming is the next man ahead of Korshak, but he is a three seconds up the road. And I don't think he's going to cause a... To um... Corsac any issues the question is how much pace does Balash Kevin have in those medium tires can he find the overcut because that would be massive also Tom 97 he's up into second place now on those hards yeah I really doubt that Kevin's going to be able to overcut them we saw the medium tires starting to lose pace compared to the hard tires a long time ago really about lap six yep. or seven we saw Tom really cruising up to the back of the medium tire runners so Bolash Kevin's not going to have very much pace in those tires left at all and if he doesn't come into the pits at the end of this lap I'll be frankly astonished at this rate he's actually risking maybe losing out to Yeltek who, who dropped down to about two seconds behind him Bolash Kevin does indeed come into the pits in the Red Bull where will he be relative to the leaders. Michael Tonitsa is the leader as we can see it, but Corsak is about half a second ahead of him, so bear that one in mind as he heads he into the final corner. He's one and a half corner. seconds ahead now. He was able to stretch out almost a second in the pit, so he's crucially got out of that DRS range from Michael Tonitsa. I'm not sure if Tonitsa had a slow stop, but Balash Kevin will make his way out of the pits. Kors Corsak is ahead, and he's going to be so close with Tonitsa into turn one. How has Kevin done that? He's kept, he's up in his second position. He's actually overcut Michael Tonitsa. He was behind him before they came into the pits. He went into the pits a lap later and somehow he's come out ahead of the Ferrari driver. Michael Tonitsa must have made a mistake somewhere on his outlap and that might explain the extended gap to Corsak up ahead of them. But somehow he's managed to lose out to Bolash Kevin and that is great news for the Hungarian and the Red Bull. 
Yeah, and I think actually Tanitsa lost time in his pit stop itself, so I'm not sure if he was a little bit early on the brakes, a bit hesitant to not pick up that five second stop go penalty, or if if maybe I know Yeltek pitted behind him, so maybe Yeltek's car coming past stopped Tanitsa from leaving the pit lane in time and cost him some time there, but Tanitsa is going to be a little bit infuriated with how this has panned out because he's lost big big position here absolutely and he's all over the back of bolash kevin over the previous lap though and kevin's tires will just be a little bit cold having come out of the pits towards the end of the lap though they are going to be heating up pretty nicely and around bahrain tire temperature is never too much of a worry at least certainly not in the colder end of the scale sometimes they overheat a little bit but uh that would actually be quite a nice for kevin at the moment if he can heat them up but doesn't look like his tyres are going to be giving him enough trouble for Tanitza to be able to make a move on him. So Bolash Kevin comfortably up into second position. Now, will he be able to close down Corsac up ahead now that he's cleared the Ferrari? I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Also, just a note for our viewers. I'm expecting the two hard tyre runners of Tom and Hittenden to be pitting around about that lap 17 mark. 12 laps on fresh mediums would be entirely doable considering we saw the majority of the medium tyre runners who started their race on mediums pit at lap 11, lap 12. Uh, Kislyak has rejoined the session in the Haas, but the Russian Good. driver has lost loads of positions. He was battling at the back of the train between Bunson, Padlo Futej and Waza uh, up ahead of him, but now he's several positions behind them with JW, Tianse, JSR all having jumped him, and no doubt Tom will have jumped him as well by the time that pit stop has shaken out. So Kiziak does have the saving grace of the fact that he's on the freshest hard tyres of anyone at the moment. But I'm not sure that the two lap advantage over JSR is going to help him out that much in the long run. Meanwhile, Pablo Futesh has been able to make his way past Waza at some point on the previous lap. So still battling down towards the bottom end of the midfield. But Boomson actually seems to have taken that. Uh, taken advantage of the fact that the guys are battling behind him and he's actually just gapping Padlo Futej a little bit here. 1.2 seconds between them, trying to keep him outside of DRS range. Meanwhile, in the battle for what is the effective second position, Tanitza is closing in onto Balash Kevin, but Yeltek, he's joined the fight. Remember, he was, uh, what, two seconds down on them before the pit stops. Now he's within a second as Tanitza closes right up to Balash Kevin into turn one. Gorsak, he's left. He's one and a half seconds ahead of Balash Kevin, closing in on to Robert 17. Okay, well, at least that makes it easier to discuss battling up at the front if uh, <laughs> Corsac gaps them. We can just assume he's a mythical being away at the front of the race. But uh, Bolash, Kevin, Tonitz, and Yeltek showing that every position matters. Dax retiring from the session. It's not been a good race for the McLaren driver. He has gone into the pits to retire. So I think that's just him voluntarily calling it a day there after he lost his front wing in the opening few laps. He had an absolutely rocket start. Both of the McLaren drivers did. And he was on the hard tyres as well. So it was really looking good for him until he had contact with, I think it was JSR, uh, into turn 13. And ended up in the wall, losing his front wing, as I mentioned, having to pit early. Strategy was ruined, and he lost so much time with the spin itself. And now he has just decided to call it a day. So sad day for Dax, one of the two Polish drivers in the all-Polish McLaren team. Uh, but Waza can fly the flag for him instead. Yeah, Waza can indeed. He's down in P11 at the moment, but behind Padlo Futez. However, he's still waiting for Robert Hitton and, and Tom to all pit, and they're going to be coming out right in that kind of battle. Sure, they'll be a few seconds down the road, but they will be on those fresh medium tyres, as it's Yeltek who sets the fastest lap of the race. Corsak has just made a move up into a third place. Balash Kevin, Tanitza, and Yeltek, they're now two seconds down on Corsak. They're just losing so much time right now. Actually, it's a bit of a weird glitch. Balash Kevin is only... Uh, second down on Robert right on um, Corsac right now. Okay, interesting. So that means they're actually starting to close down the gap a little bit to Corsac. Corsac having that traffic, of course, will be part of the reason uh, behind that. Yeltek setting the fastest lap of the race so far on his hard tyres. We saw him do a, in, uh, a similar thing, interestingly, in the first stint on the medium tyres. About five laps into that stint, he set the fastest lap 
of the race at that time. So maybe that's why we saw him dropping off in pace towards the end of the stint. Perhaps he just takes a little bit too much performance out of the tyres early and can't quite hold on to that performance and can't make it stretch to the later stages of the race. We'll have to see whether he drops off again as we get into the high 20s in terms of the lap count. Yeah, and that could very well be possible. Maybe a little bit too high on the tyre pressure. gives slightly better traction, slightly better performance, but it does mean that your tyres overheat that little bit more. They wear out that little bit faster. And then towards the latter stages of your city, you just have to be so much more careful on your rear end. As Speaking of this uh, group, Balash Kevin is right on the back of Robert 17 now. But remember, Robert and uh, Korzak, they are teammates and... Uh, Robert will not be making it easy for Balash Kevin here. Indeed not. He's not yielding at all as he heads into turn one there. Balash Kevin not close enough to make a move either. Nor was Yeltek behind Michael Tonitsa, but he got very close to it actually in the Williams. A little bit of a wide moment, Larry moment there in the racing point for Robert. And that will give Balash Kevin the opportunity he needs up into turn four. He goes alongside him and you can see Robert trying to battle it back around the outside. Trying to help his teammate out, play the team game. But it's nothing doing in the end. And Balash Kevin up into what is currently fourth position in this race. Michael Tonitsa, the next one to line up Robert here as he almost nudges the back of the racing point there. Not quite close enough uh, to actually have any contact or do any damage. And down into turn 10. He's got to account for the difference in speed. And that's not what Yeltek was able to do. Going flying into the back of Michael Tonitsa. I didn't see any carbon fiber going flying. But there was definitely contact between the Williams and the Ferrari. So the reason that happened is Robert went a little bit sideways through a turn at 10 and it just meant that Tanitza had to back out and Yeltik just was not expecting it and as a result went into the back of the Ferrari but Tanitza is looking to get the slingshot out of the turn at 13 he's got the drive can he have a look into 14 he's a little bit far back and I think he's just gonna have to wait for turn one yeah, and at the end of the day, that's probably the smart thing to do. He'll be able to slipstream him all the way, get the DRS, of course. And in fact, he will not be able to slipstream him all the way because Robert decides his job is done and he dives into the pits. He's the first of the guys who started on the hard tyres, with the exception of Dax, of course, to head into the pits in this race. The remaining three, Tom97 currently leading this race, Hittinen currently in, I believe, third, and Zename down in seventh at the moment have yet to pit. I'm interested to see where Robert comes out because Tom was about 10 seconds up the road. So wherever Robert feeds out, take about 10 seconds off that. That's where we can expect to see Tom feeding out. And to and Robert comes out behind JSR, um, Kishliak and Teamsay. So I think Tom's going to be feeding about a couple of seconds behind a JW here. Most likely or right on the back of the, the group. Absolutely, and the fact that there are some battling groups down there won't benefit him, but he's going to have absolutely electric pace towards the end of this race on those medium tyres, and he should be able to breeze past the likes of JW. He's already overtaken him once in this race, and I wouldn't put him past him to do it again. I think, I, touching wood, I think I might have resynchronized with Corsac somehow, magically. Nice. Is he currently nine tenths of a second ahead of Bolash Kevin? One second he's a now. One and a half seconds for me. One and a half. Okay, never mind. So not quite, but I think before. he's vaguely in the right place. Oh, uh, we've got a move happening down behind. Uh, JW was a side by side. You don't want to do it with there. We saw Carnage earlier on, but Waza picks up the position. JW should get the better drive. He's right on the back of Waza, but he just can't quite get the drive into turn 14. And he's going to have to settle for P11 for now as Hittinen is in the pits. So is Tom on lap 18. This is where we expected him. But Boomsong, he's looking for a move on to Zen Ame. Down the start finish rate. We'll pick up the position nice and easy. W on the back of Waza as uh, Tom will feed out behind a JW as we predicted and he's only one at two seconds behind on those fresh medium tires. Oh, very good work on the prediction there exactly where you said he would be down in 10th position and evidently I wasn't touching enough wood as Corsac is uh, in fact he's in the wall for me at the moment so I don't think that's correct uh, but no I am not resynchronized with him after all it just so happened the car that I was seeing was vaguely in the right place for a little bit, but no longer. So unfortunate one there, but he is still leading this race with Bolash Kevin in second, Michael Tonitsa in third, Yeltek in fourth, all so close between these three drivers at the moment. Bit of a gap up to Corsac up in the lead. You're just going to have to trust us on that one, but it does indeed exist. And then a nine second gap to Boomson in fourth, or fifth, I should say. That is 
it's really a tale of two fields at the moment here. That gap is huge. Wouldn't it be entertaining if we found out at the end that I was actually the one who was out of sync with Corsac and everything <laughs> on your screen was right? <laughs> well, if that's the case, then Corsac has been violently uh, changing position <laughs> constantly from 17th to 1st over and over again. So I think you are probably the one with the right, uh, right of way here, we should say. Yaltek is closing in onto Tanitza, but Tanitza has DRS himself and... Once again, it's just this DRS train so hard for anyone to be able to find a way through Balash Kevin. He's 1.7 seconds down on course, like needs to get within that one second DRS zone. But Tom, he's a two seconds down on JW, who is on the back of Waza and a paddle of Futez. Zen Ame still has to pit. He's done 18 laps on those hard tires. Surely he pits this lap round to put on a set of mediums. But Ooh. let's see, Waza goes for the dive bomb. Oh, that is a late, and he's going to force Paddle of Futes out wide side by side now as we make our way down into turns of five and six. Paddle of Futes holds on to the position. And in the background, you can uh, see the McLaren of a Thomas slowly closing in. He's going to be rubbing his hands in glee watching these guys battle. Absolutely, and Pablo Futez, for the second time this race, I'm going to praise his racecraft, because not only did he leave enough space for Wazza on the inside of that corner, what with what was a very, very late dive bomb indeed, he managed to retain the position as well, so that's really good. Heads up driving from the Alfa Romeo driver, currently sitting in 7th position in this race, so that will become 6th once Zename, the last driver yet to pit, eventually comes into the pits on his 18 lap old hard tires he's really starting to struggle now picked up a three second time penalty somewhere around this lap as well meanwhile up towards the front Balash kevin's got a bit of a comfortable lead or gap to michael tonitsa down in third yeltek closer to tonitsa but he's not going to be close enough. And actually, Tanitza oh. breaking really late there. Outbraked himself a little bit. Locked up and went into the back of Bolash Kevin. I did not see any carbon fiber going flying. But he has compromised his own run up the hill towards turn four. Yeltek on the inside. And he breaks later than the Ferrari. And he's up into third position. Up into the podium slots. The Williams goes. That's great stuff from Yeltek. Great battling. There was blood in the water. And he took advantage of it immediately. Yeah, and down behind Tom is right on the back of JW as his battle really starting to spice up. Zen Ame is still out on those hard tires. He refuses to pit and he's really spicing up this battle for sixth place. Tom dives down the inside into a turn eight. He's going to make it work as well. JW tries to hold it around the outside, but he just does not have the traction relative to those medium tires. And uh, Tom97 is up into ninth place. He's got Waza and Padlo Futez up ahead of him. Yeah, Zename really the cork in this bottle at the moment, but it's actually helping Tom97 out pretty significantly at this point. Zename going defensive as well from Padlo Futez and into the oh. side of him, going round, and that's not going to help Tom. Crashing oh, into the side no. of the Ferrari, lost half of his front wing elements there, and what looked like it was going to be such a good race for Tom all goes wrong because Zename just couldn't give up the position, tried to keep it up the inside. Padlo Futez did nothing wrong there. Zename just went careening into the side of him round he went the rest of the drivers just about managed to avoid him tom was less lucky and now he's probably gonna have to go into the pits and he might even just retire from this race because that's got to be so frustrating that is super frustrating for tom he was on run to at minimum sick the place maybe he could have caught up up to boomsong as well but you just have to question what was zen Ame doing there because Padla Futas had the position round the outside, cleanly done, and then we just see Zen Ame outbreak himself trying to battle, makes contact, goes sideways, and I just don't think there was any way, anywhere for Tom to go as they both put on a set of soft tyres. Yeah, meanwhile... All of that still hasn't interrupted the battle in between JW and Waza. Padlo Futej has been able to use it to take advantage and uh, build a 1.3 second gap to the McLaren behind. But JW so close behind Waza still on Waza has been consistently battling people for this whole race. Even in the lull in the middle of the race when people weren't battling that much, Waza and Padlo Futej were still the only two really trading positions in that part of the race. So he has really had a tough time of it this race. Wilder. He's had to battle for every single position he's got. And right now, that is seventh position in this race. So a solid point tool promising uh, at the end of this race for Wazza, the Polish driver, in oh, the no. McLaren. 
Three second time penalty won't help him though. Three second time penalty, that's crucial. He's the only man in the top 10 who has a time penalty. Um, also, Tom, his race is over. He's too far off the top 10 to have any chance of picking up points. He'll get fast slap, but of course, anyone outside of the top 10 with fast slap does not uh, count. Up at the front though, Corsak has a 2.3 second gap to Balash Kevin with a Yaltek and a Michael Tanitsa right behind, but I feel that Michael Tanitsa is just struggling for pace here as he picks up a three second time penalty, but he's far enough ahead of Boomsong for that not to matter. Yeah, but that could be critical if he has any designs on claiming a podium in this race, which you'd expect him to do. He's only half a second away from it at the moment, but now make that three and a half seconds as I don't believe any of the other front runners have picked up a penalty over the course of this race. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I haven't seen Yeltek or Bolash Kevin's names popping up at the bottom and nor Corsak's either. Bolash Kevin and Yeltek still very, very close to one another. And honestly, Yeltek looks the fastest of these three at this stage in the race. Uh, this would be big, big points for Williams in the constructors. This is massive for Red Bull, looking for a second and a uh, fifth. So a great job from them uh, so far, and they will be leading the constructors' championship coming out of round one. But if Yaltek can get past Kevin, that all changes. But actually, Michael's closer to Yeltek at the moment than Yeltek is to Kevin. Having said that, Yeltek's got a much better run out of the final corner, and he is going to be able to take a run on Bolash Kevin. Of course, Kevin, without the DRS available to him in the Red Bull, losing so much time on the straights as a result of that. But Yeltek not close enough to think about making a move, and I think behind him we just saw Michael Tonita once again really hot on the brakes. He's been so much later on the brakes into Turn 1 than any of the rest of the drivers in this race, and this time seems to have caught him out a little bit as he's actually dropped a little bit further behind Yeltek than he was before. JSR's just found a move on Tinse for P12. He's only a few seconds down on this battle for 10th place with Kishiliak in the 10th, and don't forget... Kislyak was running, what, 7th, 8th before mm -hmm. he um, disconnected from the race. So he's going to be a hard man to pass in the half. <laughs> Indeed. Lovely there. I like that. Uh, Tom97 and Zen Arme both successively setting the fastest laps of the race down there on those soft tyres, but their races have been pretty much ruined, so it's no matter how fast they go, it's not going to be fast enough. Robert, by the way, from the very back of the grid up to 10th position at the moment, and potentially with some more progress to be made here as his mediums are only 6 lap old compared to these 10 lap old hards of Kislyak up ahead. So it might not be uh, all she wrote for Robert in this race thus far. Oh, so a good Yeltek. recovery from him. And Yeltek going side by side with Bolash Kevin into the final corner. Not even DRS there and he's been able to take advantage. Kevin will get the DRS. No, he will not. It's Yeltek, the Williams with the DRS. And now Kevin's just going to be falling further and further behind. He's got the slipstream, but it's not going to be enough into turn one. Marbles all over the tyres here and into turn one they go. Yeltek comfortably ahead. Michael Tonita not able to take advantage either. And Yeltek all of a sudden from dropping off the back of the... Back of the these guys at the end of the first stint we questioned whether he'd have the pace to stay with them in this second stint of the race he's actually had the pace to go past both of them Yeltek with a fantastic second stint on these hard tires he's made them work absolutely impeccably probably something for us to note for future races you know watch out for him on those harder compound off tires because he's been doing an exceptional lot of job so uh, far and now can Michael Tanitza find anything on to balance Kevin can balance Kevin find a return move on to Yeltek because Yeltek looks like he's just going to be checking out right now. Indeed, yeah, of course. Corsac still leading the way. I uh, tentatively might suggest about two and a half seconds ahead of the rest of the guys, though I'm not Bang certain about that. on. Bang on. As, okay. you, as you said, it was 2.501. Wow, okay. Well, that was entirely based on prediction, so I'm pretty happy with that one. But I figured with the battling, they might have lost a little bit more time. So Corsak leading the way by two and a half seconds. Yeltek in second. Bolash Kevin in third. And Michael Tanitza away from the podium positions in fourth at the moment. And with a three-second penalty hanging over him to be served at the end of the race, of course. Boomson, 10.3 seconds behind them in the Red Bull. He's had a very, very solid race, and he's actually got a four-second gap to Padlo Fuchej behind, so he's really had the pace uh, over the rest of the midfield runners, but he hasn't had the pace of the top four guys who really have been in a class of their own today. Oh, Balas Kevin looking for the move into turn one. He's made it work, and now Michael Tanitza looking to join the fun and sideways through turn two, and that's going to compromise him. Yeltek doesn't have DRS. Balas Kevin has the DRS, 
on the second straight and Balash Kevin has reclaimed second position. We've only got four and a half laps left, but these are guys up at the front are giving it absolutely everything. Frenetic battling in this race, throughout this race, at the front, in the middle, at the back, everywhere you look, there have been cars going side by side here in Bahrain and it's not going to stop anytime soon as the tyres get older and the cars get that little bit more slippery. We're going to see more mistakes in the traction zones and there's a mistake from Yeltek into the back of Bolash Kevin. Not enough to put the Red Bull round and not enough to lose Yeltek any elements of his front wing but Kevin will not have appreciated that little love tap from behind. Yeah, and I'm just keeping an eye out on this battle for sixth place because Padlo Futez is not out of the danger zone. Waza and JW are right on his tail. And don't forget, Hitton and on those medium ties, he's not really closing in by enough. As JW looks for the dive in, oh. turns in this contact, more contact. JW somehow keeps the car pointed in the right direction. But Waza still side by side, side by side. You don't want to do it there. Somehow they're still alive. I dare not look, but Waza locks up down the inside into a turn 13. He picks up the position, JW will swap right back into the slipstream. All of this playing out perfectly for Padla Futes. Yeah, great news for the Alfa Romeo driver. And Waza, I saw his right front tyre touching the curb of death on the inside there. And yet somehow he managed to make it work up the inside of JW through the flat out right hander. Incredible Magician. driving from him. And I have no idea how JW didn't go oh, round JW. before. And now into the side of him he goes. JW's getting really aggressive here in the Toro Rosso trying to claim the position from Waza. This is battling only for seventh position. But still they you can tell how much these guys want it. And he thinks about it up the inside again. Waza's not going to be having a good time there at the moment because JW has been really forceful with some of these moves hitting him behind them on the medium tires doesn't look like he has the pace to catch up within the medium tires starting to go off now and I don't think Robert's going to be able to get up into the points after all but the battling in the points paying position still going on yeah and JW super late onto the brakes into turn one or maybe was it just a little bit early on the brakes than usual catches JW out and JW thinks oh well let's just go for it down the inside and was it didn't give him that much room and I feel like Waza was entitled not to give him the room there as Waza takes all of the curb through turn 11. This race is not done yet by any means. Also up ahead to Nitsa closing up onto Yaltek with Balaj Kevin starting to pull away. We don't know what their tire wear is looking like but these guys have been fighting so much. God only knows how much tire wear they have. I think we might be seeing the same story with Yeltek's tyres, although having said that, the pace he had on the straight there was absolutely astronomically higher than either Tanita or Balash Kevin there. Tanita was so close behind him, and there was such a big gap between Yeltek and Balash Kevin when they came onto the main straight, and then by the end of it, Yeltek was so close behind Balash Kevin, so he's got some real straight line speed in that Williams at the moment. Currently sitting with pretty low battery charge, but same can be said for Bolash Kevin. Interestingly, Michael Tanita, while he does have that three second time penalty, has far better battery state than the guys ahead, and Yeltek makes a mistake into turn eight. Tanita just about jams on the brakes hard enough to avoid crashing in to the Williams, and that would not have been his fault if he made contact because Yeltek did make a pretty significant error there, but no contact between them this time. Yeah, and going back to your point about Yeltek's straight line speed. There are quite a few different front wing strategies you can take here at Bahrain. If you go for the time trial strategy, I think it's five on the front wings, four on the rear wing. But sometimes race strategies, you can see that two six wings coming in or three six. So I think Yeltek's probably gone for those two six wings. And maybe we're seeing the likes of Balash Kevin and Michael Tanitsa going for the more downforce heavy setup just to give them that better run through these low speed corners as Yeltek runs wide through the final corner. I don't know if that's going to give Tanitz a chance. We've talked about Yeltek's straight line speed and there Yeltek goes in the Williams. He's just pulling away so much. He must have such low front wings. Yeah, and that running wide in the final corner might actually be part of it. It might be a different racing line. I haven't noticed it on any other lap, but Yeltek might be taking an intentionally wider line into the final corner to open up the steering sooner and thus to get a better run onto the straight. That might be part of why he is so much faster on the straight than the guys around him. It's not close enough, though, to Bolash Kevin to make a difference, although he does get very close behind him by the end of the straight. But out of the rest of the lap on the twisty bits like this, Bolash Kevin's able to gap Yeltek just enough that the Williams isn't able to think about making a move other than the one time he did. But as soon as he did, Bolash Kevin took it straight back. 
penultimate lap of the race. JSR and Tinze are battling so hard. They've been switching positions. I've been seeing it pop up time and time again. But I'm just looking at this battle for second place because I don't want to miss anything. JW, he's closing in onto Waza, who's over a second down on Padla Futez. There is not longer left of the opening race of the AOR Hype Energy Season 19 Tier 2. And Michael Tanitsa, I think he's too far back. I think this is going to be the top four as it stands. Yeah, unless Yeltek can do something about Bolash Kevin's lead over him. But look at how far ahead the Red Bull is going into the final corner here. Yeltek takes a much tighter line this time. So evidently that's not a preference. He just did run wide, make a small mistake on the previous lap. And now we're probably going to see him absolutely reel in the Red Bull up ahead. You can just see him getting bigger and bigger in the camera here. But it's not going to be enough as he gets towards the end of the straight here. Bolash Kevin still in second position. And Yeltek will just be wishing he had maybe one little tip more of one one setting of front wing more maybe just for the rest of the lap because that's where he's losing all this time to Bolash Kevin but you can see how close he gets on the straights also JW is a 10th down on Waza he's looking for the move not going to be able to find it into turn one maybe down into turn four he could have a go but he has a bit of a moment and I think Waza should be able to hold up the hold P7 the only other chance for JW is going to be down into a turn um, 11, I think, speaking of turn 11, Tanitza and Yeltek, they're making their way down onto that back straight now, and Tanitza's right on the back of Yeltek, but again, it's just that straight line speed of the Williams is too much for the Ferrari to cope with. Yeah, even with the advantage in ERS that Michael Tunisa has been able to accrue, Yeltek just has the wing settings to be able to go so much faster in a straight line that there's nothing that Michael can do to defend from him as we're into the final lap of the race. Now the final sector of the final lap indeed. Yeltek close behind Bolash Kevin, but probably not close enough. Meanwhile, up at the front, it is Corsak NS. He is leading the way and he will come across the line sooner rather than later to take the win in this race, I'm sure. There there it is. Corsak takes the win. Bolash Kevin comfortably in second. Yeltek dropping back. But Michael Tonitsa wasn't able to pip him to the line. Yeltek will claim third. Michael oh. Tonitsa fourth. And meanwhile, back behind them, JW and Wazza are still battling here. As they go on to the very final part of the lap, Boomsong will come across the line in fifth. Padlo Fuchez claims sixth. Wazza will claim seventh position away from JW. There was hardly anything in it, but all of a sudden, oh, Hittinen's above them. Both of them with three second time penalties to their name means that the Haas will claim seventh position on the Contra strategy. And the other Haas of Kislyak, who had such an unfortunate race with his disconnection, rounds out the top ten and claims one more point for the American outfit. Yeah, and uh, time penalty as well for Yeltek. So Tunitsa and Yeltek were actually battling for position there. And it came so close at the end, but what a fantastic way to start season 19 tier two of the Apex Online Racing Hype Energy League. That was crazy. That was an absolutely epic race. The battling was so consistent, so constant, and for the most part of the race, so clean as well. We saw a few incidents. We saw Zen Arme going flying into the side of Padlo, Padlo Futej at one point, and a couple of times where people were nudging each other into turn 10. But for the most part, we did see some really clean racing between these guys, and that bodes well for the rest of the season. It's going to be an absolute thriller. One thing to watch is whether these four guys who are so dominant in this race, Corsak, who you see on the top of the podium there, Bolash Kevin, Yeltek and Michael Tonitsa, whether they will be the same, well, whether they will have, sorry, the same level of dominance over the rest of the field as we saw in this race with 10 seconds between them and Boomson in fourth. Yeah, and the other interesting thing I'm looking to see as well, Ulas, when he does join the league, will he be up there with these guys up at the front or will he be battling, you know, with uh, Boomsong and uh, Padla Futes in this battle for the midfield? But regardless, we have a top four that are very, very evenly matched. Just look at those best times between the top four. Two hundredths separating the top four best lap times. That is absolutely incredible. Again, I'm going to have to take your word for it because the results screen has not come up. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, and absolutely. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, you're right to point that out. That is absolutely absurd. All of them within the 130.3s there. And in fact, it was actually uh, Tonitsa who had the fastest lap of them all in the end. Of course, they didn't pick up the fastest lap of the race. I think that one went to Tom97, who managed to go out onto those soft tires towards the end of the race 
of course. Going to do a quick rundown of the order. It's Corsak who takes the win today. Bolash Kevin in second and Yeltek rounding out the podium. Michael Tanita, oh so close yet so far in fourth. Boomson down in fifth, a ways off the front runner's pace. Padlo Futej in sixth, Hitton and gained positions to come seventh. Waza, JW and Kisliak rounds out the top 10. Robert so close on the contra strategy after starting at the back of the grid, but wasn't able to claim a point, an extra point for racing point. Yeah, six second time penalty coming in the pretty big, but uh, um, Tom had the salt rubbed in the root in his wound so hard after that contact that he had uh, um, towards the end with Zen Ame. He pitted, set a fast lap, and instantly after he had to watch um, Zen set a quicker lap than him. So that must have been a little bit irritating for him. But I mean, Tom, definitely a driver to uh, watch out for. So that was a really good shout by you. Jacob, intri I'm very intrigued to see what you'll be able to do throughout the rest of the season. Absolutely, so am I. And it, it could have been so good for him today, but alas, it was not to be. So thank you guys so much for watching today. It has been an absolutely thrilling race, and I'm sure this has whetted your appetites aptly for the remainder of the season. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. I have been Jacob Hancocks, and alongside me has been Milky Cereal. Any final words from you? Um, final words would be make sure to subscribe to Apex Online Racing on YouTube and hit them up on Twitter at Apex on Racing so you can stay up to date with whenever we go live and with all of the other tiers and other games that Apex Online Racing has to offer. Absolutely. Very astute point. Well made. And also, just uh, one other thing to note. Hopefully, next race, uh, we won't have the recurring problem with the race leader being desynchronized from the streamer. I can only apologize for that once again. I'm very, very sorry about that. In the end, he managed to gap the rest of the guys, so there wasn't really any battling involved with him for the majority of the race, at the very least. But hopefully, that will not happen again. So, join us next time to be able to actually see a real leader of a real race. Uh, can't wait for it. See you guys then. Goodbye.